Hi, in this three minute video, I'm simply gonna walk you through how the OKR template uh, configuration um, has been set up so that you can go in and modify as you see fit. Uh, if this is your first time uh, and you're trying to figure out where to find this template, uh, you can simply go to the plus sign, click on spaces, and then look for the uh, PMO option and select the OKR template. Once you do, you'll see a space that's been pre-configured to help you manage your OKRs, and that's where we're gonna go. Um, if you look at the very first thing that shows up, uh, this template, uh, or folder number zero, um, any walkthrough video uh, like this one that is relevant to a template is gonna be in step zero. Uh, and if you don't like following videos, we've actually written down the instructions on how to use this template. But in this case, we're gonna focus on settings and configuring those settings. So when we get into the space, go to the little settings icon right here, uh, and you'll see uh, four places where uh, we've pre-configured settings for you. The first one is custom item types. These are the only three, um, or four rather, options that you can add within the OKR space. Um, these options have been pre-configured, as you'll see when I open an objective to a specific view to only include the custom fields that are relevant to what you think an objective custom field should be. If you wanna add more, you can add it in here, or you know if there are some that have been created and aren't showing up, they're hidden. So you can simply click on it and it will show up. Uh, furthermore, you can edit the configuration of the main view. Uh, you can also uh, make sure that uh, you can assign a particular workflow to this uh, custom item type for objectives. So in this case, we created an objective workflow. And lastly, you can tell it where you want it to appear, right? So uh, in this case, we've enabled objectives uh, menus to show objectives, key results, folders, and tasks. You notice that deliverables aren't in here um, because you don't have a deliverable under an objective. So we pre-configured it and we made it uh, so that objectives are available um, anytime someone you know, tries to add a anything, a project or a task, right, within this space. If I go back to the main settings page, uh, the next thing that you'll see is the workflows that we've assigned to uh, tasks and projects by default, right? At this point, um, we're, we're looking at uh, just default workflows for tasks and projects because we've specified the workflows for uh, these custom item types, the objectives, key results, and deliverables. Uh, last thing that you will um, want to do is you might want to modify some of the custom fields. This is the place to do it. Uh, you can add or change um, any custom field that you want, which isn't available out of the box, uh, either in the table view or you can do so through this view. Uh, we think it's pretty uh, generic, right? But, uh, and, and it could serve a lot of, a lot of team members, but your, your workflows might be different, so you might wanna change that. So make sure that you do it within the settings of the space. And lastly, uh, what is um, a work management solution without automation? So in here, we've created four examples of uh, rules that will be triggered whenever a trigger or an event happens, right? So in this case, whenever a status of an objective happens, we're gonna react a certain way. Whenever a project risk level rises, we're gonna react a certain way, right? If a date in the field meets a condition and we wanna know what that is, right? Due date has passed, then let's send a comment to all assignees and so on and so forth. So um, this amazing template takes advantage of automation and you can build your own automation rules using these as examples to make it work for you. So that's it. Um, hope you guys enjoy the template and um, best of luck.